Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. Just look at this handsomeness. And uh, in this video, we're going to be learning about the planets. other videos that uh, are on my in my channel we have recently learned about the Sun and the moon uh, the Earth's moon and now we're going to talk about the planets of our solar system and as we go through this it's important to remember that everything we talk about pretty much applies to all stars not just the sun. Remember, the sun is a star and there are literally trillions and trillions and trillions of stars in the universe. And many of them have planets just like uh, our sun. Our sun's a typical star and like any typical star, many of them have planets. And so as we talk about the solar system, you can infer things uh, and understand things about other solar systems, although we don't really call them solar systems, we call them systems. Sol means the sun. The name of our sun is Sol, and so we call it the solar system. So some other system of, of planets might be called the Antares system uh, for the, the name of the star or whatever. But anyway, uh, so let's look at our system of planets and asteroids and comets and kind of try and understand how they're organized. So we're going to start in the inner solar system. And by the way, we divide the solar system uh, very naturally into two parts, the inner solar system and the outer solar system. And between the inner solar system and the outer solar system, there is a very convenient border, which is the asteroid belt, which divides the two. So in the inner solar system, there are four planets. And these four planets have a lot in common with each other. All four planets in the inner solar system, and these four planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, all four of these planets are rocky, meaning that they have solid surfaces. Okay, and also they're all pretty small, uh, at least in, as compared to the four outer, the four planets of the outer solar system, which are much, much bigger. Okay, so when you are asked, uh, what are what do the four inner planets have in common? Your answer is they are all fairly small and they have solid surfaces. They are rocky. Now, most of them, in fact, three of the four have atmospheres. Uh, Mercury does not have an atmosphere. Mercury is much more like the moon than it is really like the other three planets. Okay, Mercury is very close, much closer to the sun, it's the closest planet to the sun. And because of that, it is uh, really has dramatic temperature shifts. The side facing the sun is very, very hot. And the side away from the sun is uh, very cold. And Mercury has a very slow rotation because of something called uh, tidal locking, uh, which I'm not going to explain in this video. I'll talk about it in another video. But uh, tidal locking, in a nutshell, is when one side mostly, uh, for the most part, faces the other object. So the Mercury one side's facing the sun for a long time. Um, going away from Mercury, the next planet is Venus. And Venus is, in many ways, the Earth's twin. It is in, also, in many ways, not the Earth's twin. 
Okay, Venus is like the Earth gone horribly wrong. Okay, Venus is about the same size. It's almost exactly the same size. And it has a lot of the same materials as the Earth. So it's got about the same amount of water and about the same amount of everything else. Okay, whatever, gold, iron, whatever you want to, you know, look at. They're about the same. So, except that Venus has this really insane hot uh, atmosphere. Uh, really, really, really hot. Uh, the whole planet is like a giant oven. Well, what happened? Why did Venus go so wrong and the Earth go so right? The answer is that Venus is a little bit closer to the sun, and so it was heated up just a little bit more naturally, and that caused uh, this runaway greenhouse effect to occur the water from all of the oceans of Venus evaporated. And water is a really effective insulator. It's really one of the best greenhouse gases there is. And so all of that extra water in uh, Venus's atmosphere then created this uh, really effective greenhouse that continues to trap the, the heat of the sun and keeps it from escaping. So because it was just a little bit closer and the uh, greenhouse effect got carried away, it changed Venus from being potentially another Earth to being this place where life is not even possible so far as we know anyway. Um, there's some other differences too. Like here on Earth, we have uh, plate tectonics uh, and volcan vol volcanism. Uh, Venus works a little bit differently. It does not have plate tectonics, and uh, that's largely, we think, probably related to the runaway, uh, well, distantly related to the runaway uh, greenhouse effect uh, and, and the lack of oceans and things that have impacted that, the way that it's evolved tectonically. So, moving out to the third planet. You are probably familiar with the third planet. It is, it is this mysterious place called the Earth. And you are on it right now. At least I assume you are on it right now. Maybe you're not. Uh, but you probably are. And the Earth is this uh, blue and green and ye yellow. It's not yellow. This blue and green and beautiful place uh, where life abounds. And it's just the right temperature for liquid water, and it's not close enough to have a runaway greenhouse effect, not far enough away for everything to freeze, just perfect. And life has evolved here, and uh, especially the ultimate form of life, which is this handsome face, uh, eventually evolved on the Earth. And um, you know, all, you, you're familiar with the Earth, so we don't need to spend much time talking about the Earth. Uh, moving out. To the fourth and final planet of the inner solar system, there is this world called Mars. And you probably heard a lot about Mars, too. And you're probably kind of familiar with Mars also. Because Mars kind of has a special place in the hearts and minds of uh, us Earthlings. Because it is the most similar to Earth in the sense that it's not inhabitable meaning that I couldn't go there without a spacesuit. I'd die without a spacesuit. But it's got a reasonable temperature, and it has land, and it has an atmosphere. So I could live on Mars, everything except that I couldn't be outside of a spacesuit. But the temperature's decent, and uh, you know, it's got a rocky surface, it has a sky. Uh, Mars does have water but it's not liquid, at least not most of the time. We do think sometimes there's liquid water on the surface uh, here and there, but um, for the most part, it's locked up as ice. Mars does have an atmosphere, but it's a very thin atmosphere compared to the Earth's atmosphere, uh, and that's because of its size. Mars is, is smaller, significantly smaller, actually, than the Earth, and so it doesn't have a strong of a gravity. And because of that, it hasn't been able to hold on to its atmosphere as well. And so a lot of its atmosphere has escaped 
into outer space and so as a thinner atmosphere and that means that um you, you there's not quite the same pressure and that's another important reason we'd have to wear a spacesuit because our blood would boil away without uh, the pressure that we need um another important difference on mars there is no magnetic field a magnetic field the earth is a giant magnet and i've actually talked about this in another video the earth is a giant magnet and that magnetic field protects us from some of the most dangerous uh rays of the uh sun and mars doesn't have that and so instead of the some of those more dangerous uh, parts of the sun being uh, deflected around like it is here on the earth, they strike Mars directly. And so that also makes it less likely that there would be life on Mars, but there may be, there very well may be uh, subsurface life on Mars. And we just don't know yet because we have not been able to go and explore. So that is the inner solar system four planets that have a lot in common. They are smaller in size and they are rocky. Now, then we hit the next, the natural border that we talked about, the asteroid belt, which is made up of thousands of little, at, well, not little, some are little and some are big, asteroids. In fact, some are big enough like Ceres that uh, they're almost round like planets, okay? Um, and then we get out of the asteroid belt and we hit the four planets that are in the outer solar system. And just like with the inner solar system, these four outer planets also have a lot in common, a lot, a lot. They are uh, ginormous compared to the inner planets. Uh, they are gaseous, they are gassy, like boys. Yeah, you know it's true. They are gaseous. Uh, they are, um, Oh, and they don't have a surface. They are gassy all the way through. So they probably actually do have some sort of core. Uh, each one's a little bit different. But uh, we say that they don't have an actual surface. They just kind of gradually go from uh, gas to liquid. Uh, and then uh, in the very middle, they likely do have some sort of solid core. So those are the outer planets. So when you are asked, what do the outer planets have in common? You're going to say they are large, they are gassy like boys, and they uh, don't have technically have a surface. They just kind of gradually change from gas to liquid. Yeah, let's quickly go through. Uh, the foist of the, the foist of the gas giants is Jupiter. Oh, I'm sorry. Also, all four of them have rings there. That's the other fact you need to know. All right, let's talk about Jupiter. Jupiter is the biggest of all the planets. It is as big as all the other planets combined. Okay, it's huge. It's huge, enormous. Uh, Jupiter has a storm you're probably familiar with, the great red spot that's been raging for as long as humans have had telescopes. We really don't know how long, but at least... Uh, 300 plus years, could be thousands of years, we really don't know, but it has this, could be millions of years, it has this huge hurricane that has been raging forever, uh, and uh, it is made mostly, like all the gas giants, of hydrogen and helium and methane, but there are other things there as well, uh, like water, quite a bit of water. Uh, Jupiter has roughly but this is debatable and constantly uh, changing about 60 moons. Okay. It has four really big moons that are called the Galilean moons, which were, were discovered by Galileo. And one of them is really cool. It's one of my favorite. And now it's probably is my favorite moon, which would be Europa. Uh, Europa is a moon that has potentially a uh, high likelihood of life on it as liquid water oceans. Okay, uh, it also has the largest moon in the solar system, which is Ganymede, and it has a moon, uh, Io, that has active volcanoes that are erupting all the time, so that's kind of cool. And the other one is Callisto, the other 
uh, of the four Galilean moons. And there's many other smaller moons. Okay. Mo oh, and it has rings. They're harder to see, but it, it does. Jupiter does have rings. Moving out. There's this moon called, the next one out is called Saturn. And Saturn, you're also probably very familiar with. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the prettiest things to look at through a telescope. In fact, you can even see the rings through binoculars uh, if you look. Uh, Saturn is uh, kind of yellowish in color. It has these big, beautiful rings. Uh, rings is plural because there are several of them. There's, uh, there's gaps between the rings, which are created by shepherd moons. Okay. Uh, Jupiter also has a lot of moons. Uh, and uh, it has one of the neater moons, which is Titan, which is a very large moon. And uh, this moon actually has an atmosphere and has liquid, I will not say water because it's not water, but has liquid streams and rain and lakes and seas, but it's not water, it's methane. Yeah, but it rains and you know, it's too cold for it to be liquid water, but the temperature is just right for methane to be a liquid and it acts like the water of that moon. It has storms and it's a neat, uh, interesting moon. Yeah. Moving on from Saturn, the next planet is Uranus. And Uranus is uh, kind of a baby bluish color. And uh, it's uh, smaller, significantly smaller than Saturn and uh, Jupiter, but it's much bigger than the inner planet still. And it is a gassy uh, giant. And like all the, the outer planets, it has rings. And then its twin is a deeper blue color, more intensely blue color, which is Neptune. And Neptune in many ways is uh, identical to Uranus. It's a little bit cold, colder because it's quite a bit further away from the sun. It's a uh, very similar size. Uh, it's different in how it rotates. Uh, I didn't mention that about Uranus. Uranus is uh, has a strange way that it rotates different than all the other planets. Uh, but uh, And it has rings, Neptune, like all the other outer, the gas giants. So uh, there are similarities and there are uh, distinct patterns in how the solar system is formed. Outside of Neptune, by the way, just like outside of the inner planets, outside of the outer planets, there's another ring. So instead of the asteroid belt, it's the Kuiper belt. Kuiper belt is made up of comets. And uh, beyond the Kuiper belt, there's actually another area called the Oort cloud, which is also filled with comets. And that extends uh, about halfway out almost to the next uh, star system. So the solar system is actually quite ginormous. And uh, that is our solar system uh, from the inside out. And your goal, again, is to be able to tell me uh, the patterns, to be able to explain how the inner planets are different than the outer planets. Uh, where is it, Where are the natural borders, i.e. the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt and the Oort cloud? Uh, hooray! Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science student. So sign up. 
subscribe to the channel and I release lots of videos also in addition to these ones lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics those ones you don't get to see my handsome face but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted and those ones are scripted so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah 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 the end uh, subscribe thank you goodbye